Ago. Welcome to another edition of the Heritage Month Honors Series. Today we're looking at the Asin and their role in our history. This program is part of our Honors Series brought to you by the National Lottery Authority. My name is Bernard Avle. My guest Kweku Dakwanka. Kweku, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm trying to use the Heritage Caravan and some of the places we pass as the entry point for this. The most poignant place for me on the caravans I've attended has been Asin Mansu. In fact, the first day I got to the Slave River, I wept. The place was so heavy. It was so powerful. And I'm told that the river there was very critical in the slave trade in terms of even bathing slaves and all of that. So let's just start from there. You know, how important is a sin in the history of Ghana before we even get to specific issues? Okay, thank you very much. So... The first question then someone was, so who are the Asin? Yes. And this question many people have asked me several times, mm -hmm. especially there's a confusion between a historical identification of a group called Akani, which many believe brought the name Akan. So the Akani or the Akan, which means the preeminent, the okay. first, the first. Okay. To emerge. Odi, Odi kind. The Odi kind. Odi, Odi and those people, the first to emerge. So they are first in everything. In fact, J.B. Dankwa will go on to explain that the Akan itself means a person who is first in everything, well civilized, and know his staff. So going to conclude that, that's why they say, mm. because he knows everything. So disgrace can never be associated with an Akan. Okay. Because they believe to know everything, mm -hmm. first to civilize themselves. Mm -hmm. So this terminology of called Akani is coming from this uh, colonial description of specific uh, ethnic groups that were then mm -hmm. around the Pra River Basin Pra River areas Basin. where a group of Akans, mm -hmm. okay, back in the day when the Portuguese came. In fact, by 15. 27, mm -hmm. the Portuguese signed an agreement with one of the chiefs mm -hmm. who was then at uh, Trofeheman. Mm -hmm. The Trofeheman itself and then Trofu Ati Makwa and the Inebrim are Aboriginal AT people. Okay. They were there before the Trofu people, led by Mfatiamwa, who will come into the area. Before the Ajanokokobu and his people, mm -hmm. who will come and then later move on to go and found Asarimankas and Akomu and the rest, will also come to the area. It was the same place the uh, Achim group who also moved from Adanse, okay, across area areas to move all the way to go and find the Achim Ibuakwa. Okay. Same place that some who also moved to Kowu Mountains to go and found places like Bukuruwa, okay, and the Dramwa and the rest. So it is the so Professor late uh, Albert Dubuahin says that the Akan group themselves were indigenous to that area and that the assertion that they came from the northern territory could not be true because it is from there that they were hemmed and all the people moved to find their settlement even in Ashanti and the rest. So this is the Pra River Basin? Pra River Basin. It was a confluence of group of Akan speaking people. I'm looking at the map and I'm seeing Achims to the east of yeah. the Asin. Yeah. I'm seeing Chifu and Dentra to the southwest yeah so i'm seeing wasa further west and i'm seeing asante up north and i see fante down yeah are these the main groups yes those are the main groups so they were within that river Pra river basin uh, getting to the Birm area where the Birm area where they were close to the acham people mm. so that's where they were hemmed in now there are some people today i will say they are amalgamation of a tea Akoti, Akan speaking people, and some Fantis. Ooh. And that is what has given them the unique Asan language, 
which has a mixture of the Aboriginal Iti language, some infante, as well as the Akan tree. But the Akan tree seems to have overshadowed the language there. Mm -hmm. So the Asan tree is unique from the Asante tree. Just as a Kwapimi tree is also amalgamation of the Aboriginal wow. uh, 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 Okre language as well as Latin language, producing the unique Equapimi Equapimi tree. language. So it's an amalgamation? Yes, amalgamation. When wow. language goes through interaction, it wow. produces a unique or hybridized form of language, mm. which is a new language of its own. Mm. You get that point? Very so, interesting. So this is uh, the Asana people. Now, who are the Asana people? Mm -hmm. Where do they come from? So the Asana people, they are about um, four group of people that came to be uh, called the Asan. First, they were uh, the Aboriginal group that were there long before others would come into the area. Mm -hmm. The first group were the Eti. Mm -hmm. So this Eti believed that they came from the Konkom Forest okay. or Konkom Kwa. Mm -hmm. That is a silent forest. And these people are Endo, Asan Endo, Fantasy Endo, and the others were Busumadri. Jakang, and Framadri, and the rest in the area. So those were the people who were Aboriginals. And then there was another Aboriginal group very prominent, that is Kushia, now known as Orenchi. They also were originally in the area called Trofaheman. It is from there that their leader led them to the lower banks of the Pra River. So those are the uh, Aboriginal AT people in the Asin society. Yeah. Then after them came the Equity people. The Equity too were there a long time ago. And the Equity people, we we're talking about Rakasi, mm -hmm. Akinkensu, and the rest within that area. They called themselves Equity because when they were moving, there was a, a tree that was lying on their path. Mm -hmm. And so they have to avoid it. Mm -hmm. So Equity means those who avoided the path. Okay. That's why you see you uh, you cannot uh, want to be kotiko kometino embopo. You cannot avoid the thumb to mm. make a knot. So okay. equity means to avoid okay. the path. That's why they call them equity. Okay. And they were there a long time ago, talking about they two were some form of aboriginals. Then you have the Jasu group mm. who came to be known as Akonson Tree. Wow. The Akonson Tree, they were in the Jasu in Brazil, the uh, 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 Jasu. Mm -hmm. That's the, where they were aboriginal and uh, they used to be. And they were led by their leader who was finding a new place because the Akan group had come to the area and they were encroaching on his territory. Uh -huh. So he made a southward migration. And then when they were also coming, the leader entered into the forest and there he got a chimpanzee. Okay. And chimpanzee in Akan is called Akonson. Okay. Like the one that can jump, uh, somersault, Akonson. So this guy, he killed the chimpanzee and buried the head. And because he did that and the land they came to, they called them a constant tree, okay. which means chimpanzee heads people. Okay. Okay. So they two four. So it's five. about four groups. Yes. Then you have the Efutuakwa group. Wow. The Efutuakwa are the people who you call the Asinufosu today. Okay. So they also moved from Adansi mm -hmm. all the way to come and settle at that place. Then finally, the Akan group, one from Dompasi, uh, Dompasi in a, uh, via Amakom. Mm -hmm. We were the Asenia group, mm -hmm. led by Otibu. So they moved from Ashanti through uh, from Pasifai and Mekum and came all the way to also settle in the area in a place called Nimiasu Abuabo. Wow. That is where they were settled. At the top, all this time, they were living in the northern corridors of the Pura Basin. And uh, while the Eti were living below the Pura River, so they came and settled there. Then another group also moved from uh, Adansi Abu Abu, and they were led by Ansa and his group. So they also came and settled there. And they are the group we call the Apimenim. And then the group led by Otibu, who met uh, Apotai, which is true, called the Apote. They, they corrupt the name, but the name is Apotai and his group. They also came to join and they founded the Atadansu group. So this wow. is why today there are four traditional areas in the Asim enclave. You Namely. have the Futuakwa mm -hmm. traditional area, mm -hmm. you have the Apimenim traditional area, mm -hmm. you have the Atadansu traditional area, and finally Orenchi traditional area.
which I was see. created recently. Because originally we have, I mean, from what I know, there were just two: the Apimenim, which is on the east of the river, and then the Atanda, so which is on the west. Yes. But you've added two more, so it's actually yes. four. Because the Aboriginals were telling the migrant Akan group that came from Adansi Abrabo and as well as Dumprasi Amakum, who came because of their numbers and swallow the autochthonous autoch autoch groups, which is the aboriginals, the Ekoti, the Konsontri, the Futuakwa, and the uh, Orienti. So over the year, Futuakwa decided that, okay, you, uh, self, when you came, I'm the one that even gave you opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then, they are in another project, some, and we are the first, when he also uh, took over, he decided to assert his claim about historical autochthony uh, uh, within the area to also create his own paramountcy. And that is why we have, now have four paramountcy within the Asin enclave. This is the honor series for the City Heritage Month. My guest, Kweku Dakwankra. Today we are discussing the Asin. And this is just to give us the four groups. We haven't even spoken about the trades, the roots, and all those things. But so far, we know that they are the group very close to the Pra River. In fact, they are described as the group at the place where the Pra River turns southwards and is described in the key places. We'll come back and talk about more. Stay with us. Ago. Welcome back to the uh, on-air series, Heritage Month, my guest, Kukuda Kwankra. One of the things I, I sort of suspect is the Pra River being in Asin land and sort of a buffer zone between Asante and Fante. And I'll tell you this. So there's a map I'm looking at of the Sagrenti War. And if you look at the, the road from Kumasi to Cape Coast, Praso is actually in the exact middle. Yeah. So when you're driving or walking in those days from Kumasi to Cape Coast, that walking route, Asin Praso is halfway down the river. Yeah. And I feel it's like emblematic of the, the role the Asin played in our history, the slave trade, the rivalries. Is there a link there? Yes, yeah, so the Asin Praso, as you are talking about, mm -hmm. originally that's what, where they don't used to be there, mm -hmm. but they've moved. Mm -hmm. So today, Asin Praso and then Asin, uh, uh, Praso, mm -hmm. it, and the river Pra is used as a boundary between Central Region and Ashanti Region. Interesting thing is that when you are driving or walking mm -hmm. and you reach Asin Praso, mm -hmm. you see that your phone and everything is Central Region. As soon as you cross that small bridge, you enter that you are in Ashanti Region. Interesting. Very interesting. And you could see from side to side. Mm -hmm. So that is the interest. So they, they, they are now in the center. But prior to that, they used to be up there. And then they moved down. What is their relationship with the Asante? So the relationship, as I, 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 I explained earlier, mm -hmm. is that the major group that came to swallow the Aboriginal groups and became the overlords were the group from Adansi Abrabo, Okay, and so in his group, who then have Amu Adade okay. as their leader, mm. who was then staying at Nimiaso area. And then you have the, uh, the Asanier group, who are from Amakom and Dumprasi, that also moved mm -hmm. from the Ashanti enclave before the formation of Ashanti or mm -hmm. within it, mm -hmm. also moved and came and settled. The interesting is, thing is that before the Ashanti wars with the Asan, all these as, uh, uh, the three Akan groups, that is those from Adansi and from the pre-colonial Asante area, were on the top of the river Pra. Okay. While the Aboriginals, the Eti, were then below. Okay. So what happened was that over a period of time, 
the chieftaincy in these two areas, okay, was between these two accounts who have the modern system or centralized system. Okay. And these autochthonous people, they believe in priest heads and what have you. Mm -hmm. But they also build some kingdoms, mm -hmm. as uh, Professor J.K. Finn tells us mm -hmm. about the pre bourbon mm -hmm. ethnic groups, which including the Eti, mm -hmm. and they are in their territories within the Asin enclave. Mm -hmm. So what happened was that um, there was a fight, okay, where first we have to talk about the group that when the, this Akani group were there, mm -hmm. they were called Akani. Okay. And at that time, the Akani in, uh, included the Adansi, the Kefu, the Eti group, and Dentra, and so on. But by 1660s, the other Akani group like Achem has moved from the enclave and gone to settle at Chebi. And when they moved, that place, if you look into your map, it is called Greater Akani. Okay, and the little Akani became the Adansi Asun group that were there. And later by 1670s going, there was a war between this uh, little Akani group. So the Chefu were defeated. So they moved out. And now the Akani group became the um, the Asun and then Adansi group. I see. Then they try emerged as the powerhouse. So when he started spreading their kingdom, they got a, 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 a win. They went to Wesa, conquered them safely, and then bring, brought a Kefu under them. While this war was going on, there was also a war between the Adansi and then the, uh, the people called Asun group. Mm -hmm. So during this war, the Adansi were defeated. So they moved. So they also moved away from the Akani coalition. And so Akani came to signify the Asin group. And they were well known for production of the purest of gold, which is called the Akani Sika, which became the most prestigious of all gold production. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this group that remained there then was between the, this Asante group and the autochthonous uh, AT group, the uh, Koti and the Futuakwa, mm -hmm. and, and then Akonson tree, then forming the uh, uh, the Asun kingdom. A, so the kingdom then got divided into two. For instance, um, when the Apimenim came, mm -hmm. they were not able to conquer. So the land of Endo was given to them. Mm -hmm. So Apimenim themselves do not even have land on their own. All their land was given by the chief of Endo, who was the pow powerful among the Eti. Okay. While um, Apimenim group, the uh, Otibu and then Apatoi group were able to defeat the Busumagi and as a result took a large chunk of Busumagi land over a time. So during their war between the Ashanti, most of them fled. First migration took place when the Ncho was expanded. Those who could not withstand the power of uh, 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 Bwem decided to flee and cross the river Pra and came out to live among the Eti who were living in the south of the Pra River. And then during Ashanti expansionism, some of them also continued to move until the war or conflict between the Apimenim and then uh, the uh, um, Atadansu also occurred. So within that war, which uh, was about the fact that uh, a chief of Apimenim died and he was buried with a lot of gold. Mm -hmm. And Otibu and Ko, they ransacked the dead chief's grave. Kojo Otibu. Kojo Otibu and then uh, uh, Amu Apatai. They went there and then they, 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 they ransacked this. And this led to war between the two Asin, Akan Asin group, who were then rulers before the Etis were under them. Okay? And so within this war, Asanti can send somebody to come and settle the issue. In the settlement of the issue, they killed, they killed those the emis the emissary. emissaries. They beheaded them. So they drew Ashanti into the fight. Yes, so they drew Ashanti. So, so within that fight that occurred, the, As the two Asini chiefs, Apatoi and Otibu, fled from there and ran to the coast. And they found themselves at Anomabo Fort. That's where they came to hide. And when Asantehini asked them to, uh, the Fantis to return, the uh, the two of them they did so that's until under their chief or csbe uh sbe or what in history we got or said to took one answer came 
with his army. He had already wanted to fight the Fanti for a long time to gain access to the coast. So he used the pretext of this protection by the Fanti chiefs, of these two Asini chiefs, to engage in the Southern campaign, which resulted in the total defeat of the Fanti in 1806-1807 because of these Asini chiefs. So, so let me explain. You are saying that these two chiefs who were fighting the Asante escaped to Anomabu. This is Fanti territory. Asante has always been envious of the Fanti's access to the sea. Yeah. And wanted to fight the Fanti's anyway. Mm -hmm. So this fact, the fact that they kept these two Asin chiefs at, at, at Anomabu gave Asante the pretext, the pretext to go and fight. Yes. And he succeeded in 1808. 1806. 1806. It was fought for one year. Wow. Did they ever capture the two Asin kings? Yes. Yeah, so this fight was so hectic. In fact, all the time they want to make a move, the Fantis were able to meet them. By the time they reached Abra, they were able to mobilize. So for the first time, they passed through Accra. And the Accra people who came Pesemeku and others, and another guy helped the Ashantis and showed them the route through Winneba. So the fight first started from Winneba. And the people of Winneba fled to the Fanti communities okay. to come and hide. And there's an interesting history there. When they fled, the governor there was called um, Meredith. So Meredith himself also came to Anamabu to fight against the Ashantis. But when he returned, some of the even Winneba people gave him their goods. And when they returned, they couldn't find the goods. They catch Meredith and then they killed him. Mm -hmm. So if you go to Winneba, they have a song. They will be singing, Yerichuo, 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 Meredith. How they killed Meredith. So within that same Ashanti uh, incursion into the south, the fight occurred at the coast. The Ashantis were able to overpower the Fantis. Some of the Fantis fled into Anomabu Fort and to Cape Coast Castle. And that is also what uh, 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 culminated in the decline of Anomabu as a powerful commercial town. So when it defeats, the CSCB then as the Fantis. Which animal in the sea is the king that rules the sea? And they say the Bonsu, Bonsu, which is the way. So he said, from now onwards, they shall call me or say Bonsu. And that is how the name Bunso went into the Ashanti. So this would also be the period where Ashanti power came all the way down the coast. Explain how then this led to the bond of 1844, because I'm told this was signed by about 10 or so Fanti chiefs who felt that the Ashantis were becoming too powerful and they needed the British to help them. Yeah. Can you do that as a side conversation? Okay. So, so as part of this, then what happened was that when the uh, Ashanti came, won that war. He demanded for the heads of the two Asin chiefs. So they brought the two Asin chiefs to him and he beheaded all of them immediately and decided that they should be paid. So the Fantis who were hidden in the fort were about 2,000. They gave 1,000 to the Asantis and then the British governor, Torain, who was supposed to protect the people, also took a uh, thousand and both the Ashanti and the British sold those people into slavery. And the remaining Ashanti sent them to their kingdom to become domestic slavery in their community. So that is what happened. And as a result of this war, the Fantis were then uh, vulnerable to the attacks of the Ashanti because the British looked on without giving their own allies any defense. To, because all prior to everything, they were supplied with ammunition to ward off Ashanti incursion. But for this particular reason, because the British themselves were accusing Fantis of being crooks and selling gold by adulterating it. So they buy the pure gold and then they mix it with certain uh, lead and then they get it plenty. So the British were angry. So when the Ashantis were coming and then these Asini chiefs were they said, okay, let's see how it will pan out. So it was after the war that a new governor that came in, uh, which was uh, McLean, the, uh, sorry, McCarthy. When McCarthy came in, he decided to give support to the vulnerable southern uh, groups. And that is why he also went to war in, on behalf of the southern group in what we call the Ensamanko War. Ensamanko. And yes, the Battle of Ensamanko. And so in the Ensamanko War, he even lost his head in that war. And then the new, another war will be fought in 1824 with all the southern people, including the Asan, and all the entities that were vassals to the Asante states, all came together supporting the British with some Chevrolet 
warriors from Sierra Leone, as well as some Hausa uh, 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 military men, warriors, that also came to join. And then they fought against the Ashanti at Katamansu. And then Ashantis were defeated. And the place where they fought was called Dodua Forest. But the place became Katamansu because the Ashanti at that time called Oseyakoto boasted that he is going to defeat the southern people and put them in the belly of Enkamfra, shah, the small fish. So the, the saying then was that, why can Tamansu win to me? That is why the place is Katamansu. You swear to do something, but you couldn't. That is the meaning of Katamansu or Akatamansu. You see that? And so that is what happened there. So after the defeat, then the, Fantis, uh, the, Ashanti, the British themselves realized that there is the need to protect those people who have assisted them in the defeat of the Asante. So when Commander Hill, who was then in for uh, McLean, came, he called the Fanti, the Fanti chiefs. They have abolished the slave trade. I'm trying to tune into the bond of 1844. Yes. So the Fanti chiefs went, realized that some of the chiefs were being incarcerated mm -hmm. for engaging in slave trade. So they went to McLean to ask him to interpret the abolition law to them. Mm -hmm. When they went, Commander Hill had then taken charge. And Commander Hill told them that before he interpreted that piece of legislation to them, okay, um, there is a small treaty he had to sign mm -hmm. with them. And it was three pieces of sentence, as you know. One, that all the places Her Majesty or His Majesty force and castles are with their cannon showing. Wherever when they throw it rich, that place will become British jurisdiction. I get to the point. That was one rule. The second is that all the uh, chiefs who will sign the treaty will avoid practicing a certain abominable cultural practices, including human sacrifice. The third one was protection against the encroachment of the Ashanti. And this chief, instead of coming to ask their people, because they have counselors, they didn't do it. They stood on their ground. And they signed. They, and they so signed. this was chiefs of Denshira. There were eight chiefs. Asin, Abura. The, initially, they were not part of this thing. The first eight chiefs were Fanti chiefs alone. Okay. They went and signed the agreement. And okay. later, additional eight Fanti chiefs, and later, the Denshira, uh, Asin chiefs, Abura, and Abura, all Dominase, of them came to, Yes, all came together, and then they signed the bond. So it continued to increase until it reached even Vota, wow. Greater Accra, and so on. There were a series of treaties. Mm -hmm. So that is what it happened. And this was 6th March 1844, yeah. which is why independence is 6th March 1957, uh, because it marked the beginning of British rule. That is it. Very interesting. Thank you for this history. Really exciting conversation about the Asin. We've been discussing this on the Heritage Month on this series. Kukuda Kwankra, my guest. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We'll be with you next time. Bye-bye. Ago.